What's up, everybody? So I wanted to show you a really quick uh, trick today. And I was talking to Cray 2.0 and Mike the Guru this morning as they were trying to solve a question about how to rotate a point in space relative to another point. And so um, we're going to quickly demonstrate that. We're going to delete when world has started for now. We're going to add a on update event. And then we're going to grab a motion move to. And we're going to be moving um, this object, the sphere, which is currently at 0, 0, and it's up by 0. 0.5. We're going to rotate it along the Y axis, which if we did right now, would not move. It would stay put. But if we move it outward, so let's say we go to here, it will begin to move around the world's 0, 0. That's relative to that point. So what we're going to do is go in here and attach the rot script that I just created. And you can see it's trying to move it to a point over here, which we don't want to do. So we're going to delete this. We're going to grab the world, stop the world while we're working on the script and click clear. Okay, now we're moving self. It's back at its origin position, which is one over from zero, zero. And then we're going to take two operations. So we're going to add, no, no, sorry, excuse me. We're going to grab the multiply symbol and we are going to take a rotation input and put it here, and we're going to rotate to uh, one degree on the y axis every update, which should be 40 to 60 times per second. And we're going to multiply that against the position of self. And so, what's happening here is from the zero, zero perspective, we are going to rotate one degree, either left or right, I don't know which. And that's based off of the point of zero, zero because it's the position of self. And we're rotating the vector, which is a position. <clears throat> so let's quickly see what that does, and then we'll start to learn a little bit more about it. And I go ahead and hit play. There we go. So we can see now we've got a sphere that is circling around this point. And if we were to select our sphere and try to slide it outwards a little bit, you'll see it will always make a circle around zero, zero. So very nice. Let's go ahead and hit stop. Let's see if I can click undo to move that back. Looks good, hit play, nice, and stop again, perfect. So now that we understand sort of <laughs> what's happening here, we have the object, we have taken a position, and we have rotated that position around the world's zero, zero space. So for instance, if we didn't do it on the Y axis, but instead did this on a different axis, we're gonna get very different results. Um, depending on which one I selected. So there we go. We've got basically like a, a sun and moon shape. So you could imagine using something like this to do a sun. Now, if you were to do this, I would not recommend doing this on update because that's pretty taxing on the server. Um, you would want to create an event loop, which we'll quickly set up, which would be when world is started, when event is received, send event uh, with delay, We'll grab send event to object. I would recommend renaming these to something like uh, loop. I don't have one in here called loop, but we could create one called loop. There we go. Press confirm. And then we change all of these to loop as well. And loop. There we go. And then we could do this. And now what we would do is instead of using move to with instant motion, we go to motion, go down to move to over time. And now we can move to this position over one second. And since it's looping every one second, that should be pretty smooth. We'll delete our on update. And now. We're going to change this to be instead of one degree, we'll do 10 degrees and we'll hit clear and play. And there you go. And it doesn't look too bad because it's relatively small. Of course, if we were to take this and make it into like a sun or a moon shape and put it out here and then hit play, it's a little janky. It will be smoother when the world is published, but um, if we get far enough away, you'll be able to tell. I'd also change the time. And what I'd recommend to do when you're changing time is to create a number variable. So we'd call this one duration, call it dur for short. And we could call that 10 seconds rather than one second. We can now put that into here and there. And now when we stop the world and start it over again, it will move 10 times slower. And that looks a little bit smoother. That's probably not a bad. You could, of course, change the degrees. And I would recommend creating a rotation for that. And you could change that to, say, one degree. And now that'll move even slower. So it'll be very, very slowly, but also super accurate. Go ahead and hit stop. You could also create, like I said, a variable for that rotation, but we don't need to. And um, the most important thing about this, though, is the question that uh, Cray and Mike had, 
And so I'm going to show you a quick example of what they were doing. And then we can talk about how this is accomplished. So they had a object on a board like this. And the user was able to place said object on this board. We'll paint it to be a different color. And then they had a duplicate of this board and this object. And they wanted this object to move to the relative position over here. And so to quickly demonstrate this, we're going to slide this all down and make sure it's a good size here in real world. Yep, it is. Okay. And so we're going to delete our cube over here. We're going to open this one up and we're going to make this interactive and grabbable. We won't give it physics. And then on this one, it will not be interactive and grabbable. It will simply be animated. And this one will be running our rotation script. So we'll go ahead and attach that. We might need to stop the world if I haven't already. Double check, good. Okay, so now that we've got the animation attached, we now need to go into our rotation script and add a couple, a uh, few variables actually. So uh, da, 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 da. we're gonna adjust our duration down to 0.1, so it'll run 10 times per second. We're gonna go create a new variable, which will be an object variable called other ball. And then we need to know about the other board. So we'll create an object called other board. And then we also need to know about our board. So we'll create another object called our board and press confirm. Now that we have all those values, we're gonna go reference them. We need to open and reclose to see those new values. And now we'll open up this board here and drag the reference pill to our board. We'll then need to turn off animation. So set that to none, so it's not animated. We'll come on over here and do the same for these two. Board, drag into other board, turn off animation, close properties panel, open up the ball, shrink this down, slide that over to here. And then this doesn't need to be changed. Okay, now that we've got that set up, we can now move this with our hand and we wanna see this move wherever that moves relative to itself. So now what we can do is go in here and calculate that. And so we know that it is rotated 90 degrees and we know that 90 is rotating in this way. And so if we take 90 degree rotation, we actually need to rotate it minus 90, which is actually 270. And so we're going to change this real quick to 270. And uh, oftentimes I just guess and check here. So feel free to do the same. And then we also need to calculate the position. And so we need a relative position. So I'm gonna go up here and create a new vector variable. And we're gonna call this new position and press confirm. We're then gonna grab at the top of the values tab a set and we're going to set our new position. And so to calculate our new position, we first need to grab a plus symbol. And what we're adding to this plus symbol is the position of self. And, or excuse me, not the position of self, but the position of the board, our board. And so the position of our board is the relative, right? So we're gonna calculate the di direction vector from this board to the here. And then we're gonna rotate that by 270 degrees for this one. And then we're going to add this back to it, which should give us the correct value. So let me show you how that works. Now we got our position of our board, that's the last step. Then the first step we need to do, or the next step we need to do is multiply the direction vector. And we calculate the direction vector by grabbing the minus symbol and subtracting, and I might have them backwards. So I gotta figure out which one we subtract from first. We're just gonna grab position of, and if I get it backwards, we'll flip it. So I've put the position of in both slots by using the thumbstick to duplicate. So you can see duplicate there. And then we're gonna go back to our variables tab and grab the other board. And we'll put that here. And our other ball goes here. And then we want to move to the new position that we just calculated. And so what's happening here is we're calculating that vector. And a vector is like a straight line. So if we imagine it being this here, and I recolor that so it's easier to see, you can imagine that from the origin position or the, so the center position of this object, this is the direction vector. It's a um, value that ranges, from, <laughs> that points in this direction from this position. 
And so if you were to look at that as a number value, it would look like it's a position from zero, zero, but it's actually based off of this position here with this direction. And then we rotate it 270 degrees, which lands us right here, which we add to this position to get this position. And so that's how that works. So hopefully that helps. I'm going to quickly read through this and then we're going to try it out. So when world has started, we're sending loop to self. We set the new position to be um, negative two, or excuse me, two, zero, two seventy zero, multiplied by the position of other board minus the position of other ball. And then after we're done with the multiplication or the rotation of the vector, we then add the position of our board, which is then going to be used when we move self to the new position over the duration. And we send loop to self after duration. And so what we should get, if I go and hit clear and play, is the inverse. So I, I got them backwards. See how it's in the negative version of that? So we just need to flip those values as I had mentioned we might need to. And so to flip values easily, what I like to do is duplicate this line, thumbstick to the right, then drag this like I'm crossing them and then delete the one that's empty. And then we can go and hit clear and play. And now we can see our ball is in the correct spot. And if I grab it, you'll see that it follows my hand relative to this board. So I could have a room where this is being moved by one person and it's showing up over here, which is pretty cool. So Galactic, do you want to demonstrate moving that for us? Very nice. Super duper cool. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> pretty neat little thing. Thanks guys for tuning in to this uh, video. Please do like and subscribe. Thanks Galactic for hanging out. Thanks Cray and Mike the Guru for asking. And uh, we'll see you in Discord. Join us on Discord. Uh, link is in the description. Bye!